Hello and welcome Velocity Banking students, Kingdom citizens, and new people. How you doing? My name is Denzel Rodriguez, your personal finance geek of the 21st century. And today I have a special guest with me by the name of Chris Kirkpatrick, who is with Life 180. You may have seen him on my YouTube channel already, at least once before we did a live stream together. It was a fantastic, uh, very in-depth conversation on index universal life insurance policies, how we really expose the inner workings of it. So we had a ton of fun doing that. And now I brought him back here with me today. Hello, Chris, how you doing? Hey, I'm doing awesome. How are you? Doing well, pleasure to have you. And uh, it's an honor and privilege to be in your presence. Uh, you've been doing uh, a lot of work really in the infinite banking space, but also really exposing a lot of the, the, the ugliness that happens in the industry. A lot of people tend to focus on, you know, the good of infinite banking and it's great, it's a great product, but there's also a lot of bad that happens, a lot of behind the scenes stuff that uh, most yeah. of them don't know. And so you're revealing these, these pitfalls, these traps, these um, tricks and deceptions of the trade. And so it's really nice to have someone that's willing to, you know, take up that, that role of uh exposing quote unquote the evil that happens in the industry itself so with that being said i want to give you the opportunity just to introduce yourself again to my audience tell them a little bit about your youtube channel <laughs> what's the main focus um yeah. how long you've been doing your work and then i'm going to have you talk about the iul challenge just a little bit uh, sure. to excite some of uh, my audience members and some of the agents that also follow my youtube channel who sell iul um, and or yeah, life. totally. No, it's amazing. Well, thank, first of all, thanks for having me. I loved our last conversation and I just love your heart and I love where, you know, your perspective and how you put God so up front, uh, in front of everything that you do. And, uh, and so it's, you know, anytime I have a chance to collaborate with people like you, I'm all in on doing that and trying to serve people. And so, um, you know, I, I guess just a real quick bit of, you know, my background, I was uh, the head of business development for a Fortune 1000, uh, one of the top IUL companies in the country. Uh, that's how I got into the business. I got in basically as an agent, kind of climbed through the ranks, through management, so on and so forth. And uh, the, the, the higher I got, the more I was able to kind of see behind the curtains and the more I saw that IUL was a bit of smoke and mirrors. And so I, I left the index universal life space and I joined the whole life insurance space. And I, I got into the infinite banking world and, um, you know, and I, I don't, I don't like to throw names on it. Like, I mean, infinite banking is, is just kind of like the marketing term that most people know. Mm -hmm. Um, but it's really just like maximum efficient whole life insurance, you know, funded properly, uh, participating mutually held life insurance companies. And when you utilize that properly, uh, as, as a foundational component of your financial life, I'm, I'm a big believer. Life insurance should never be an investment. Life insurance companies are not great at investing. They're great at, pro at protecting your purchasing power of your money. And, and preservation of capital is one of the most important components because inflation is a, is an element of our economy that's built in. And, uh, I'm a big, big proponent and, and advocate for cash flow investing. I wrote a book called Cash Flow Hacking. Um, you can see it here. And uh, and so I wrote this book. And the reason I wrote it is because I, I want people to understand that we don't have to work 40 to 45 years to be able to reach that kind of financial freedom because that's all retirement is, is the ability to, to have control of our lives, right? And like to be financially free to not have to show up to work to earn a paycheck. Hopefully we've saved up and done all these things. And by the time we're 65, so to speak, we're supposed to have enough money uh, to be able to maintain our, the rest of our lives and, and cover the rest of our lives. And to me, it's kind of one of the myths that people are taught that, you know, is, is you have to kind of get on the hamster wheel and do that 40 year journey. And I believe it could be done in 10 to 15 years at the max. And so I love to show people how they can do that. And that's kind of what we do. And I run an agency. I, I love coaching agents. I love uh, coaching people to different strategies and how to leverage life insurance as an asset in different ways to solve different problems in different people's lives, you know, because everybody's in a different place. Everybody has different skill sets and objectives and, right. you know, they're starting from different places and have different needs. And so that's just what I love to do is I love to kind of educate people. That's why I started my channel a long time ago, Life 180 on YouTube. Um, and I do a lot of educational stuff. I get, I, I like to think I do a good blend of, of, you know, kind of inspirational stuff and then kind of like the real technical stuff, right? Like, and, yeah. and so, um, you know, you, you made the comment about uh, the IUL, IUL stuff that I'm doing. I, I just, I'm really passionate about what we do. I'm really passionate about the role that life insurance can play in people's lives. And I, 
it, and I want to make it really clear, I'm not, I'm not against Index Universal Life as a product per se. I'm against the way that Index Universal Life is being sold almost universally on TikTok, on YouTube, and by all these kind of influencers out there right. through organizations. World Financial Group and PHP and PFA and, and so on and so forth, right? So um, yeah, I, I just, I'm a big believer there's so much misinformation out there and, and it's 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 kind of, I don't know, I my wife and I talk about this all the time because you're like, a lot of people talk about the positives of infinite banking and I love to do that. I do my share of that. But at the same time, like nobody is out there telling the truth and I just, uh, you know, even in high school, I was, I was the guy that stuck up, you know, a, you know, for the, for the kids getting picked on against the bullies, you know, my wife kind of brought that to me the other day. She's like, cause it, you know, this, this gets taxing. I'm not going to lie. Every time I make a video and I get 150 IUL agents just bombarding me. Right. And right. it's like, I don't back down because I have an answer to everything. And I refuse to like, and I know this may be not the best way to ha like look at it, but I refuse to let them win. I refuse to let them have the last word. Uh -huh. You know what I mean? Because especially if I know they're wrong. And so I see you respond to I, just I, comments I put, alone. I'm like, wow, this guy's active on his YouTube channel. I, so serious. I, I put so much, I put so much of my heart into that, you know, and my wife sees it and she's like sitting on me, sitting on the couch next to me. Right. Or we're laying in bed, you know, and I'm like hammering away <laughs> and she's just like, man, like you just can't help yourself. Can you? And I'm like, no, I really, I really can't. And it's like, I genuinely, all I want to do is, is get people the right information so they can make an informed decision. Like, that's it. Like if you, if you understand what IUL is and you believe uh, that the moving components are within your risk tolerance and you decide to go with it, well, then that, that that's an educated decision. Good for you. But the problem is people are being sold something that they don't understand. They don't understand all the moving parts. They don't understand where the risks are. And, um, and, and so I'm, I don't try to convince anybody out, you know, to not do it. I just try to educate them as to what they really are and how they really operate and where the risks really, you know, kind of exist inside of index universal life. And, and that way they can make a better decision. And that's, and, and that's one of the reasons I guess getting into it. That's why I started the IUL challenge, you know, yes. tell that's, us about I did. what the IUL challenge is. How does it work? And for, sure. cause this will be really valuable for some of the um, insurance agents mm -hmm. that I know watch my channel that learn on kind of like the velocity banking side of things, but also on the infinite banking, just, you know, creating content. There's a lot of agents out there that are selling, um, IUL and whole life, or maybe just whole life, or maybe just IUL. And I know they watch us and they're trying to learn either how to create better content, get on social media. I try to encourage agents. I'm like, create content is the best way to really get your message out there, be unique and that such. Amen. Uh, but talk about this IUL challenge, really, especially the timeline that we're in, why that's even more important than the challenge itself. Um, because just knowing that really sets the stage for how uh, yeah. quote, quote, dangerous these these products are and, and how they've been sold. Yep. Yeah. So, I mean, there's a couple components to it. One of the things that that really, I guess I'll, I'll have to go back to what made me so passionate um, to make the pivot personally from IUL to whole life. And that was effectively writing policies that I was told were max efficient were, you know, I was optimizing them to the best of my ability as an agent. And, and so like, cause there's a lot of agents that say, well, as long as you design them properly, they're going to be fine. Well, no, that's not true. You know, like they may not blow up. They may not lapse. You may not have like a catastrophic issue, but if you're selling somebody a product with the goal of tax-free retirement income. And let's say you illustrated it 50,000 a year, tax-free retirement income, but then based on the actual performance of the policy, they're only able to pull out 20,000 a year of tax-free income. If they're relying on that extra income, you've hurt them because it's about expectations and it's about the stability and the security, because let's face it, they're sold as 401k alternatives, right? Or rich man Roths, right? That's, yep. that's how they're positioned in the marketplace. And that is my problem within universal life. And so I realized that like that and, and full transparency, man, that is the story I was selling when I was selling these things because I didn't know what I didn't know. You know what I mean? But then when you start to see how they actually perform long term, for me, I'm, I'm somebody who when I realize a different truth, like or, or like I realize I'm wrong, I will admit it. I'll take my medicine. I'll, I'll educate myself and I'll pivot. And I had to have a lot of really hard conversations with high level clients and friends and family that I put into that, you know, like it was. Yeah. But, 
I was willing to do that. I had to do that. It, it, my integrity required me to do that. And so, you and know, sure they respect you more for it now. Right? Yeah. I mean, there were a couple really, a couple conversations that were pretty <laughs> tough, because, you know? Yeah. I mean, cause I pushed pretty hard on the benefits of it. And then, mm -hmm. you know, then they're like, but Chris, like, this is like the opposite of what you were saying 18 months ago. And now, you know, and it was pretty hard because if you know anything about IUL, like the surrender cycle of these at the beginning in the horrible. first 18 to 24 months are horrible. And so I was like a couple, couple people, I was like, you basically got to walk away from 20 grand that you put into this policy and it's my fault. <laughs> like mm. that's, that's hard to do. That's yeah. hard to do. But I could show them how over the next 10 years it made sense, you know? And so, um, was what it was, but, um, when I moved to the whole life space, you know, I guess, you know, that was the 20 end of 2014. And ultimately, uh, when, when I, when I look at the IUL challenge, why I've created it and is because during the past, let's just call it decade, um, really index universal life, I guess let's do a little quick history lesson on IUL. Everybody likes to be like index universal life is, is 25 years old because it was created by trans America in 1997. And yes, it was. And that is true. It's a factual statement. IUL was created in 1997 by Trans America. But until 2009, Index Universal Life had virtually zero market share of permanent life insurance. Like if you look at permanent life insurance from the GUL perspective, the whole life, the UL, the traditional UL, not IUL, but traditional UL, um, and, and the VUL space, if you looked at those four and then you threw Index Universal Life in as like the fifth component to it, IUL had no, like literally virtually no market share, under 1% market share until 2009. All right, not and then what happened was 2009, it shot through the roof because of the story of upside potential and downside protection coming out of the great recession. Yeah, it made sense, right? And so, and that's, by the way, I joined the industry in 2009, right? So like for me, it was like, hey, I bought into a hook, line, sinker. That's kind of my story. But then what happened was we had cap rates go from 16 and a half percent all the way down to like 12 and a half percent at the time. Uh, and um, now they dropped to like nine to nine and a half percent. From 09 to 2014, 2014. Okay. Yeah. They dropped to like 12 and a half and now they're down to, let's say nine, nine and a half, sometimes eight and a half percent, depending on the carrier. But I think let's just call it between nine and 10% is where most cap rates are at this point in time for most companies, any company with any kind of legitimacy, in my opinion, as of, um, <clears throat> as of right now, today in 2022. Okay. Yep. And so we, we, people, the, the reason I started, I guess, to get right to it is the reason I started the IUL challenges to me. It's a, it's a life insurance product sold on upside potential, downside protection, participation in the markets, right? In through the, the purchasing of options index, right? So like, it sounds really good, but when you, when you look at it and you understand like, okay, let's just, let's just for the simplicity component of this, let's just call it the S and P 500 index, right? Now there are other indexes. There are other proprietary indexes There are all sorts of different ways to go about it, but let's just for simplicity's sake, let's say they're, they're participating in the S and P 500 index. So over the past decade, we look at this and we go, well, I mean, you can talk to anybody and it's like the S and P 500 has had the best decade literally of all time, right? Correct. So from, from after the crash to 2020 yeah. before COVID best, best Correct. time ever to heck, like, you could even say, you could even say right through now. I mean, we, the, oh, okay. well, up until, okay. up until January, 2022, cause we had that dip in COVID, right? Okay. Like at the beginning of COVID. It really it just, fast. It just, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Gotcha. Got gotcha. right back up. Right. And, and to that point, Denzel, what would happen is the, all the IUL people would be like, you see that, 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 that dip at that moment, you were protected, right? Like, so that, that kind of added to their story in a way, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And so the thing is, is I knew that we had the greatest bull run of all time in the S and P 500 and that all these products that were selling IULs participating in the S and P 500 index underperformed what they actually were illustrated to perform. And so people go, well, how could that be? Yeah. It, it just makes no sense. I mean, how, how is that possible? It? Right? Like totally. nothing but gains yet. When you look at the totally. internal rate of return on my cash value, it's not even yeah. equal to what was originally illustrated. And most agents know that illustrations are conservative, not even like yeah. above what it could potentially do. So we're talking an illustration that tends to run on conservative numbers 
And so you're telling me I didn't even do conservatively good in the best, like you said, bull run in the history of the United States. Exactly. Yeah. And that that's the challenge. These these agents like to say that it's done, that that uh, that these are conservative assumptions based on everything. And the, the reality is they're, they're anything but conservative. And and if you go back through history and so this is this is the thing I I'm, I'm a you, you call yourself a geek about this stuff, right? Like I, I do too. I'm a nerd. I'm a geek. I'm a, like, I, I, I am. I just, I love this stuff. My, my wife picks on me about it all the time, but like, I'm obsessed with how these things work. Right. And, and, and the history, if you look at it, so before 2015, the IUL space was completely the wild, wild west. You could literally create illustrations with nine and a half percent assumptions, 9.1, 8.9% assumptions. And then you could wow. bake in, in the illustration, positive arbitrage of up to 3%, 3 like 3% arbitrage on policy loans. It's, it was, it was mm. like insane. And, and you can imagine what that does to the illustrative performance on how agents are selling these. And so the regulators said, whoa, 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 that's enough is enough. We're gonna create a regulation that reigns in how people can illustrate these things because it's out of control. And so in 2015, they created what's called Regulation AG49. So Regulation AG49 was created. And what that did is it took companies and it, it, it put handcuffs on them on their ability to illustrate with the, the big arbitrage numbers because they were doing 3%. It took uh, and it eliminated their ability to uh, to illustrate at the astronomical levels. They they implemented what's called the hypothetic, hypothetical look back test. So what they would do is they look back and that's what, uh, instead of being able to say, hey, we're gonna illustrate it at 9.1 or 8.5 or 9.5 or whatever the number that the agent wanted to kind of populate in there for to, to create a result in the illustration, the regular Regulator said, no, based on the index that you're using, the cap rates, there's going to be this algorithm that says you're allowed to run it at this percentage, right? So AG49 was supposed to kind of rein in all this recklessness. The problem is when they did that, the, the companies were looking and they go, well, wow, the, these things don't perform the way that we thought they would. So they had to get creative. They started creating multipliers. They started doing a bunch of different things um, to counter AG49. So Pack Life is kind of like the, the the poster child for this operation. They kind of led the charge on this. And they started doing these multipliers and doing these other riders on the policy that you could add on the policies to make it so you could basically buy the performance illustrated we illustrated performance in the policy. So they still illustrated well and they still looked really attractive, but it didn't change the fact that they weren't going to perform. And if you understand, um, it, well, I, I'll say it this way. They could perform, technically speaking. I don't want to say they can't perform because they could if, if the environment lined up perfectly for them, which it doesn't 99% of the time. But here's the deal. When we think about why people buy Index Universal Life, it's based on the story that they're sold of upside potential, downside protection. You can't lose your money. You can't lose this. You can't like it, you're so protected. You're guaranteed growth, all these different things. Nothing could be further from the truth. That is not the way these things work. That's how they're sold. And so the thing with multipliers and when you added in all these other components to it, what happened is, you know, these the uh, you're basically injecting more risk into a product product that people are buying for perce perceived safety, right? Like it just, right. it, 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 there's such a disconnection. And so then what happened is that ha that went on for five years or so. And then in, tw in, in December of 2020, regulators said, okay, enough is enough. Uh, we're going to create regulation AG 49A. We're going to amend and update regulation AG 49. And they basically put a restriction on what they could do with multipliers and all these other riders and moving parts. That's where things kind of got nuts. Um, and, and you'll see now that's where uh, a lot of these companies go, oh, well, now we have uncapped index participation. We have uh, proprietary indexes that are like cherry picked. Those two things were a, a response from the companies and they only created those because they had to to be able to have the, the illustrations perform in a way that they could go out and sell them. But the bottom line is, you know, you're if you understand how IULs work, then you understand that it doesn't matter if we have S&P 500 is the index that we're participating in. It doesn't matter if the, if the cap rate, um, the, well, let me say it this way. There's a lot of different moving parts. If it's an uncapped, there's going to be participation rates or there's going to be spread charges. If it, if it is a capped rate, there's going to be a cap rate and participating uh, 
par rates that they're that that can be manipulated um, or changed based on the needs of the company. At the end of the day, you're dealing with an options budget and you're dealing with options costs. Those are the things that drive what the actual performance of the index is. And that is where kind of lies the problem with IUL and why they've not performed over the past decade during the greatest boom that the S&P has ever seen is because of the fact that during this boom, what's happened is fixed rates have gone down, right? The fixed performance of the general fund of these insurance companies have gone down. So what we've seen is a reduction in the options budget. And what's happened there at the same time is that because more and more companies have gotten into the IUL space, A, and B, that there's been more volatility in the market, and C, we've had a lot more day traders, that whole space is picked up. And so now what we have is we have a lot more competition in the options markets. And so the cost of options has gone up, right? And so when we look at these things and we say, well, the options budget's gone down, the options costs have gone up. So it doesn't matter that the, that the, uh, that the S and P has gone through this great bull run because it, you're not really, that that's not the the component that drives the performance in an IUL policy. The real two components that drive the performance in your policy is the options budget and the options costs, because that's what's going to dictate what you're able to actually participate with inside of the index performance. Does that make sense? That does. I know it's a lot. It does. So let's let's oh. uh, want to recap on some stuff here so regarding yeah. leading up to the IUL challenge. You went over greatest mm -hmm. bull run, 2009, 2022. Then uh, between 09 and 2014, what IUL really uh, uh, agents talk about is the is the cap rates, right? How good yep. they are. But here we yep. see them in the greatest time. We see the rates dropping, and that is due due to what you just finished saying about the options budget of an insurance company, right? Bingo. Yep. Um, and what was the second thing? So the options cost. The cost, right. Cost budget of the actual index itself. Um, and then as this is going on, now regulators are coming in because I'm assuming you're getting a lot of customers complaining. Policies oh, yeah. are not performing. Um, so boom, regulators come and That was 2015, by the way. 2015 okay. was AG 49. Gotcha. So 20, 2015. Yeah. AG49 yep. comes out to try and help regulate it. But then obviously these companies make a ton of money. They got a ton of lawyers, the best people in the industry to, to kind of redesign this thing, make it look sexy again. And so yep. five years later, boom, AG49 comes out 2020. Uh, and that was more so talking about the multiplier since AG49 was kind of affecting the cap rates, what could be illustrated. AG49 comes out talking more about, hey, these multipliers, you can't show them on the uh, on the illustrations anymore. Um, arbitrage with the loans that obviously that gets affected because of the um, the the spreads of what the multiplier yep. could potentially do. Like you said, it could do it, but yep. 90, what, 90 of the time them, that doesn't happen, right? Right. They just couldn't give them as much weighting right? Like, cause before gotcha. they were able to really manipulate the illustrator rates, it's not that they all went away or they were told they couldn't use them at all anymore. It's you just couldn't have them be so powerful on the illustration. Gotcha. Gotcha. So it still exists as of 2022. Mm -hmm. um, yep. But they just basically kind of neutered its ability to, yeah. you know, <laughs> go, go crazy. Gotcha. 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 And so yeah. now we're in a time where just with the, um, we could talk about just the, the, the social media presence, the, the rise of social media, the rise of people taking control of their finances mm -hmm. a little more, um, giving credit mm -hmm. to the FIRE movement, the financial independence retire early community that really stemmed out of, I want to say, Dave Ramsey, uh, where yeah. the millennials said, hey, man, instead of throwing my money in high cost mutual funds, let me throw it in zero cost index funds. Let me throw it in dividend uh, paying stocks and, and, and these mm -hmm. options. So with that, you've got a bunch of these millennials um uh stefan he's one uh, there's there's one dude that's a magician there's like there's a youtube channel called millennial money and it's like the four yeah. it's four top youtubers and all they talk about all day long is like day trading options trading 
Is and that the one with like Graham Stephan and Graham Stephan and, uh, and uh, Meet Kevin and Meet Kevin? Uh, yep, a couple other guys. The yeah, magician yeah. dude, I've, I've I can't say his name. name. Yeah, he like yeah, yeah. He's like I, yep. magic and finance. Totally. These are big yep. channels, and so they also yep. have very very large like Discord communities and just paying communities. Mm -hmm. All these people that are learning how to trade for themselves. And so it's not just the insurance companies that are getting involved in the index options, but it's also mm -hmm. these, you know, millennial entrepreneurs that have these businesses, their mm -hmm. their coaches, their trainers, their investment trainers and all this stuff. Uh, and that's adding to the, the market, the cost of it, right? So all those yeah. other components. And so yeah. now it's it's 2022, yeah. as, we, as you and I record this video, we're in, we're in July of 2022 and coming into this IUL challenge here, uh, was there other, some other things you wanted to mention as you're building up to the, the challenge? Well, yeah, well, I would say is like, you know, cap rates from 2015 to 2022, where we are today, continued to drop, right? Continu they didn't just stop dropping, right. they've continued to drop, you know, and, and, and so that, that's something worth noting. Um, and then the other thing is, is that regulators right now, um, because insurance companies response by creating these no cap uh, indexes and by creating these proprietary indexes, regulators are coming, are working on an update to regulation AG 49A and they're going to come out with an AG 49B. And, you know, in my co last conversation with Bobby Samuelson, who is one of the forefront leaders in this space, you know, on and in this in this area, you know, we were talking about it last time he was on the channel. I'm actually interviewing him again on August 4th. So I'm super excited to uh, spend a couple hours with him talking about all this stuff. But the, yeah, please, because there's that there's was such all, a good video. There's going to be all sorts of really good updates. You know, it's going to be amazing. And so, um, you know, because he's got his finger on the pulse more than anybody. And he understands this stuff. Honestly, like a lot of what I've learned, I've learned from him. You know, like, you know, he he's a in his website, just to give him kind of like a, a plug, there's nothing in it for me, but he is just a life product review. Anybody that wants to learn about Index Universal Life, you don't have to take my word for it. I mean, I do the best to try to like educate people, but if you want to like vet me and what I'm saying or whatever, Bobby Samuelson has the best reputation in the industry. Companies pay him to come in and basically vet their stuff. Uh, and and wow. his, 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 uh, he runs a blog. It's like 99 bucks a month. In my opinion, if you're in this as a professional, it's the best 99 bucks a month you could ever spend. Like, and I don't say that lightly. And so, um, he, he's just amazing. And so it was actually my conversation with him the last time I had him on the channel that inspired this IUL challenge, right? Because what happened was, you know, if you want to bring that board back up again, yeah, that you're showing. So what happened was in my last conversation with Bobby, you know, we were going through this timeline effectively uh, how you have it written out. Right. Okay. And so I said to him and I go, Bobby, like if, if, if all this is going on and we have this great bull run, isn't it kind of sad that none of these policies have performed? you know, the way, the way that they're told to. Right. And he's like, Chris, like it's, they it just, they, they don't now, is it possible for them to sure. We're going to find a unicorn product that's been designed properly, was bought at the right time, maybe managed perfectly along the last 10 years that outperformed the illustrative rates. But that's only going to happen because of the fact that during the past 10 years, the market environment has bailed out the policy, right? Because the growth has been so good that it's almost countered the negative uh, effects of the internal moving parts of the policy. So that's but but even still so i'm doing this challenge where we're giving a thousand dollars away to an agent that can show us uh the pol the the illustration that was submitted with the policy right the illustration has that was originally submitted and an in-force illustration that outperforms 10 years later and out of surrender period that is outperformed the original illustration right and so to this date, I've got over a hundred thousand views on all the platforms of the of the videos that I've created on this, and not one. I've had plenty of people write to me with lots of opinions on stuff. Uh, we've had other agents create videos uh, that leverage third party software and Excel sheets and and spreadsheets that make it look like they've done it. Um, but either they don't like money uh, and they don't want to send me the illustrations, or they're you know they're just they're just being manipulative in some tactic. And I personally believe that the latter is true um but 
but the bottom line is, you know, I, I just hit the point where, you know, Bobby and I were talking and it was like, why is this not the case? And, and so I made the comment to Bobby and Bobby was like, listen, Chris, what's saddest is that they probably most policies, most policies probably haven't come to performing within 20 to 30% of the illustrated rates, meaning they're only really performing at about 70% of what they were illustrated at at that point in time, right? And and during the greatest bull run of this index and whatnot, it sh I mean, the fact that that's happening in that environment, what's it gonna look like over the next 10 years? Now that we're at rates are lower, now that I'm, I don't know about you, but like, look at where we're going in this, in this world. I don't know what the economy looks like. I don't think the next 10 years has any chance <laughs> of looking like the last 10 years. Do you? No. No, no, no. I mean, just based on the videos I've watched of yeah. you and some other very prominent, I mean, guys like Kiyosaki um, in yeah. th that, that spent a lot of time in reading and understanding crashes. Even a guy like Ray Dalio, who I, I respect quite a yeah. bit in that space, yeah. are like, totally. hey, it, it's, it's going to hurt this time. 2020 was like a little sneak peek of that dip yeah. and that fast recovery. But, but the money is going to run dry. Eventually, oh. they're going to run out of printing money. And we're already at hyperinflation, although they're not saying we are. Right. They said 9.1% right. recently, but it's more like 15 to 20 when you factor yeah. in food and gas um, and some other yeah, things. Yeah. So yeah, the it, things, things we actually are just lining up. On. Yeah, totally. things we actually spend our money on. Well, things are lining up for like oh, yeah. the, the best orchestrated crash we can think of. And so mm -hmm. to not be positioned in, in an opportunity where you can have access to capital guaranteed yep. readily available yep. Yep. and and putting yourself in positions where you can increase cash flow rather than trying to focus on net worth and yep. and when i speak to a lot of um, iul agents they're kind of focused on that net worth that final number you know mm -hmm. iul can look like 20 million dollars in cash value at age 70 or 60 or 55 and i'm mm -hmm. saying well my issue is now like how, how can i yes grow my money safely tax-free but also have liquidity to that and it's near impossible mm -hmm. to have access to cash value in the first few years if you're designing yeah. it for maximum uh cash value if i'm not mistaken could be wrong on this in, in the iul but uh some of the designs that i've seen where you have uh like a high focus on cash value there's mm -hmm. it's not available to you um right if i'm not mistaken so it's that's like, you're 100 oh, right so i have to wait a few years for that money um, to be readily available so that means if i would have just had a whole life putting in the same amount of money and I could have 90, 80, 90% of what I put in available yep. and then have that money go work for me in a cash flow producing vehicle, such as a small business where I can sell products and right. services or even real estate if I'm knowledgeable in that. Um, now I'm earning money on two fronts, you know? Totally. Uh, so yep. <clears throat> continue. I, so IUL yeah, challenge. No, I mean, you hit the nail on the head there. That's good. Yeah, so I'm learning a lot from you on that aspect. So IUL challenge 1K is now, one, originally was 500. Now it's at a thousand yeah. dollar payout. Well, you yeah. pitched in 250 for it, right? Like, so yes. I had to up it. Like, and I had to, like, I had to match your increase. So I was like, let's just go to a thousand and make it even, you know? Okay. So, Love it. And so, so, you know, like, so I gotta, I gotta give you credit because out of all the people, there've been two people that have kind of gotten behind because I, I'm not going to lie. Like it, it gets, I, I, like I said at the beginning, I put my heart into this and, and I, and I, I genuinely, a lot of people think that I'm just like out this, like, I don't know. I, I feel like I get. You're on a crusade, you know, you're on a. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. Well, and people just are like, oh, you know, you're just like biased and trying to sell your stuff and whatever. It's like that. Nothing could be further from the truth. Mm -hmm. I'm out there trying to help people because I believe now, do I have my biases and my opinions? hundred percent. Yes, I do. Like anybody else in this world. So I encourage everybody to vet what I'm saying, like go do your research. That's why I so openly give out Bobby's website because like you will find all of the mathematical factual stuff because guess what? He is basically, he's not an actuary. So I don't want to say he is, but he basically teaches actuaries what to do effectively. Right. And so wow. he knows the math 
math behind these things that nobody else in the industry does, right? And so I, he's infinitely smarter than me when it comes to this. Like, I'm just a better, like maybe marketer around it, right? Like, and so like, I'm just, I leverage his stuff and I, I, I vet what I'm saying, go read his stuff, go read other, like do your research. Don't just take any one person's opinion, you know, as anything, like I would say, um, you know, so, I'm, I'm not trying to just sell this, but what I will say is I'm hyper passionate about what we are able to do for people from a financial structure perspective. And I think what we're able to do, people like you, people like me, people like my buddy Caleb, he, you know, at Better Wealth, people, um, you know, like a lot of the banking people, even though I, you know, I don't agree with 100% of infinite banking per se, 98% of it, I think is right on the money. And, and what I would say is like the people that do this right, like I'm a big believer of everybody needs an emergency fund. Everybody needs an opportunity fund. We need safe money before we go out and take a lot of risk. Market cycles happen. We got to prepare for the market cycles. We got to make sure we're, we're insulated, we're protected because there's all these studies that investor behavior is the number one reason that people fail with their investment strategy. And so if that's the case, why don't we implement a strategy that eliminates the investor behavior problem, right? And that's what I'm passionate about is helping people solve the number one problem that's holding all the people back. Even if the market performed well enough, it's the investor behavior that kind of makes it so people fail. So let's, and they, it, it, the investor behavior happens because of poor financial structure, because the market cyclicality, I think that one of the greatest myths told in this world is the younger you are, the more risk you can take. Now, I understand the concept of that because of the fact that you're young, you have time to make up for losses, so it's not going to kill you, right? Whereas if you're 58 and you lose everything, well, you don't have as much time to make up for it. And so the sentiment is accurate, but the bottom line is if we know that you're 25 and you're going to work till 65 that's 40 years we know there's going to be four to six boom bust cycles during that time go look through history we know it's going to happen and so if that's the case and we know that more people create wealth during the bust cycles than during the boom cycles why are we not preparing systematically for the bust cycles right to really take advantage of those oh. why are we not trying to prepare? what's that no i, I like that i like that it's very interesting the, the it focus just, on yeah. Bust. Well, so and think about it this way. What happens is people need to save before they invest, but they need to save with the intent of investing. And so during my like, let's just take a 25 to 35 year old. Let's just say that that you start at 25 at the beginning of a boom cycle. And then at 35, it's a bust, right? You can feel really good. Let's say you jam money into your 401k and IRA and Roth IRA and you're feeling really good and you have a good job and you maybe get a couple of promotions over the decade. Things are good. And then you're 35 years old and the market goes through a complete nosedive like 2008, right? Or like COVID and you lose your job or something of that nature, right? And then, or maybe something like we're coming into right now, right? Yeah. Like, and so let's, it happens. And when that happens, your retirement values go down because you re invested before you saved, which is what most people do because 64% of Americans don't have access to $2,000 in a retirement in a, in a savings account, which is insane, right? So what do you do? You leverage your 401k, your Roth and those accounts, your investment accounts as your rainy day fund, which is like one of the worst things you can do. You lose your job. You're worried about how you're going to pay your bills. You're worried about making your mortgage payment and you're putting food on the table for your wife and the kids because you probably got married and had kids in that 10 year window. You know, you have all these responsibilities that you didn't know you had or that you were going to have. And, and so now what happens is because you lost your job, now you need to liquidate a negatively performing asset just to survive. And now at 35, before you know it, you got nothing and you're starting over. You lost a decade of possibility. Mm. Like that is the cycle that is killing Americans right now. That is it. And wow, that is my passion. Why I do what I do to teach people. Now, people that sell IULs are hurting potentially our ability to be able to serve people to solve that problem. Because what's going to happen is regulators are eventually going to lump IUL and whole life together, even though nothing could be further from the, like they are totally two different opposite products. Mm. Regulators put, we're at risk of having them lumped together. So is there a reason that I'm so aggressive against it? Yeah, it's to protect the baby that I love. <laughs> you know, it's like, that's that's the reason. I'm, I'm trying to protect the thing that I know can help people, right? Whereas this other thing is like a cancer, in my opinion, you know, like that, that's, you know, think about it this way. Think about it this way. If when, when you get an IUL, you basically are a profit center of the company because most IULs 
when you think about it, all the moving parts, whether it's with a participating mutually held company that created an IUL, like a mutual, for instance, or yeah. whether it's um, whether it's a uh, with a with a stock company like a Symmetra, let's call it, or you know something of that nature, right? Like, doesn't matter what end of that pendulum mutual company or not, it's still an IUL. So you still are a profit center for the company. You don't participate in the profits through a dividend with the company like you do in a, in a whole life. In fact, mm. I'm just going to kind of throw a pen under the bus right now real quick. Like if I were to buy an IUL, the last company I would want to buy it with is a mutual company because the mutual companies have a lot of whole life on the books with a lot of guarantees. And as a policyholder with a participating mutually held company, you they have uh, the the company has an obligation to support those dividends and guarantees, right? So if they get taxed or stressed in the performance of their general fund, all they have to do is move the moving parts in the IUL to create more profit because you're a profit center to support the whole life company, the whole life policyholders. That's it. And so, and, and when, when push comes to shove, if you're with a Symmetra, if you're with a, a publicly traded stock company or any kind, even if it's not publicly traded, if any kind of stock company, that selling IUL, their obligation is not to you, the policyholder, it's to the shareholders of sure. the company. So if, if they start struggling to, to meet profits, what mm -hmm. do you think they're going to do? They're going to come raid you. The IULs are one of the most profitable products on the books of, a, of, of the insurance company. So they're going to have you as a profit center. So if I had to choose between I want to be a profit center of a company or I want to be effectively a shareholder of a company that participates in the success of that company, which are you going to choose? Like holder all day. Yeah. All day long. Like, so yeah. like the thing about this is like when we just back out of this and stop looking at the illustrations and you know, all the nuances, although I love getting into details to show people while they're all kind of smoking mirrors. Like if we just use common sense, you start to realize like, whoa, like this is not what I thought it was. You know, I, I want this, you know, I want the whole life policy. When you really break it down to people in a very simplistic, like who do you want as a business partner? Like what's, what, if you were to get into business or to buy a contract, which contract do you want? Right. And the reason I love whole life insurance right now, because of the world that we're in, whole life insurance companies have been around for 180 years, you know, since the 1840s. And if we know that, and we know that whole life companies have managed transitions. Sorry if I'm going off topic, by the way, but if we know that they've managed transitions through three different versions of the dollar. Think about that, like three different versions of the dollar from the institution of the Federal Reserve Act in 1913, in the 1870s, and then in the 1840s, there were three different dollar changes. Yet the insurance companies that we work with never missed a dividend. They managed those transitions beautifully. And so with everybody right now talking about like where Am I going to keep my money, right? And what's going to happen in this world? Are we going to lose the status of the world's reserve currency? Is the dollar going to lose its value? Is it this? Is it that? What do life insurance companies do? Participate in mutually held life insurance companies do one thing and one thing alone. They mitigate risk and they preserve the purchasing power of your money. And if it comes to crypto, for instance, do I like crypto? Yeah, I speculate in crypto. I it, it's it's on my you know I don't think it's for everybody. If crypto becomes a real viable thing, guess what? Life insurance companies are going to get involved in it. They just will, you know, they like, and, and they'll start utilizing it as a hedge to make sure that they get where they want to get and, and that, that your money is protected. I'd rather, rather than me try to pick and choose the time on the dollar and the devaluation and the world's reserve currency getting lost. I'd rather my money be in a life insurance company as a general fund with billions of dollars being run by the best money managers in the world to mitigate that risk and have my money in a place where a lot of Congress people, Ben Bernanke and all these people have their money because I know that they're not going to just like allow those elite people to have their money go up in smoke. Right. right? I, so like to me, I want to do what the most successful people in the world are doing and this is what they're doing, you know? And so, you know, when, when all these clickbaity titles, like do what the rich people do or do what the wealthy do, like I kind of get irritated at a lot of like the clickbaity kind of stuff, but at the same time, there's truth behind it. I just wish people would go into more depth about why that truth exists. Yeah. Gotcha. Gotcha. I like that. So coming back to the IUL challenge right. here. It's a thousand dollar payout. No, you're good. No, this is good stuff. And trust me, my audience appreciates detail. Um, they're already okay. used to me putting 40, one hour, hour and a half, two and a half hour videos out on just say one topic um, and how we just really open up on it. Cause nobody else does that really. Everyone's looking for, you know, to catch your attention for 30 seconds. And I'm more okay. so interested in people who are actually going to take action on their, on their finances. 
Um, totally. So this is to insurance agents, right? Um, Thousand dollars payout. You must have the in force illustration of yep. uh, an an existing life insurance. It has to be existing. I U L. Got to yeah, be existing. Got to have the original illustration. Has to be at least ten years. That was submitted with the policy. That was submitted right. So go back. Say it's twenty twenty two. So in two thousand twelve, let's say you wrote a policy. You need that original yep. illustration, and you need yep. the in force illustration of twenty twenty two. And we need to see yep. did it perform according to the original illustration in year yep. ten. And even if it beats yep. it by a dollar, you get paid a thousand bucks. There you Correct. go. Correct. And then you get, simple. and not only just are you getting paid, but you're getting promoted on yep. Life 180's YouTube channel as a solid, as a solid insurance agent. And even I will promote your work as well on my YouTube channel, you know, which has over 40,000 subscribers, 3.5 million yep. views at this point. And when you look at the space of infinite banking, there's not a whole lot of players. So you get put on two very credible YouTube channels. The other YouTube channels all watch each other, all the audience, totally. I should say. The audience, we all have pretty much the same, very similar uh, audience uh, type. Yep. So you're getting the whole market share there and that can bring you a ton of potential business you know even though 100%. we don't provide iul and neither does chris mm -hmm. but at the, at the end of the day i have clients that say denzel love your views on whole life but i want an iul do you know someone that you know you could recommend my way and i and i send them to youtubers that i yeah. think are doing a, a good job and yeah. one of those guys i refer to all the time is uh james barber over at uh, oregon okay. cashflow pro he does both whole life and okay. iul and so yep. I think he really lays everything out. You know, he even told me he designed a policy and he was like, this could absolutely explode in your face. And here's how we prevent that from exploding. So I've never had an insurance agent show that level of transparency. Um, mm -hmm. So I, I do appreciate that. So that's the challenge and they have to email you directly, correct? Correct. Yeah, I, I need the emails of the, the full illustrations, uh, both the imports and the original. If you email them uh, and I'll check them out. And if the numbers line up, I'll respond. Well, I'll respond either way uh, yeah. and kind of let you know what's going on. But if they line up, I'll respond. I'll send you some money and we'll get you on the channel scheduled up and I'll, I'll connect you with Denzel and uh, yeah. we'll go from there. I'd be happy to do it too because I was actually trying to help accomplish his challenge, Chris's challenge. I yep. even, uh, we were hopped on a call. I had a very prominent um, uh, individual in the IUL space, well-known yep. in his, and it turned into an argument, basically. It wasn't even, no one yep. could provide an illustration. No one could provide an enforce illustration. It became an argument of whole life versus IUL. And I had to right. constantly like, I got grown men in the room, it was like five of us, I think. Cause I was, it was my business partner, his business partner, yep. Chris, myself. Yep. So it was five of us grown men. I'm the youngest 26 year old. These are all grown men, been in the industry for a while. And Chris is like trying to get details and Zell's trying to get details. One is just listening. Um, and it was really the, the oldest gentleman in the room, just like complaining and arguing like, like we're in high school or something middle school it was terrible and i i felt embarrassed because i was like here i'm wasting chris time here i'm i'm like Dang, no i thought they were gonna waste that illustration it, I was it, like, it just fires me up denzel it doesn't it's not wasting my time it just fires me up because it makes me realize like like the, the the thing i've realized is people come at me pretty hard like especially on TikTok. that's probably where it's the worst honestly like because you got all these people, I think that's where the worst IUL advice is is in existence right now is on TikTok because there are these short little one minute clips, right? Like of of like, hey, look how sexy this is, smoke and mirrors, wow, you know, sham wow, out of craziness, you know, and it, it you know, so I just I've kind of come at this methodically showing the truth about like exposing some different things and how they really work and people are coming at me pretty hard but you know i i, I just get fired up by it and people think I, I i think people believe that i'm just gonna back down or that maybe they just don't realize i know as much as i do or they don't know as much they don't know what they don't know and you know and so it's funny i mean i had a guy on there uh who was who was really coming at me and he's just kind of like after maybe two weeks of really hardcore engagement he's just disappeared because he's just realized like you're not gonna win you know like he mm -hmm. and 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 i'm not backing down 
I'm just not because like, I know the truth and I believe what I believe. And I, I believe so emphatically in what we can do to people. And I believe that's under threat. So I'm not going to back down. And honestly, this goes back to like, I stick up for the people that are being bullied. And I feel like it's not being bullied, but I think they're being misled. And I'm going to do what I have to do to stick up for them and to at least get them the information so they can make an educated decision. And, um, you know, it's like somebody needs to do this in the industry. And I just kind of feel calling that it, that I got to at least play my part. And so I like that. That's why I'm doing it. I love it. I love it. So we, we went real deep today in terms of really the history of IULs. Um, nice breakdown. And if you look at our other collaboration, we, we dove even deeper on that along with um, answering some Q and A's from the audience. So I encourage you guys go watch that. I also encourage you guys check out Life 180 YouTube channel. Uh, where you can see more of the IUL challenge videos um, to my uh, fellow insurance agents that maybe you're with PHP, maybe with WFG, um, and you've been in the industry for like 10 plus years, or someone in your upline has been in the industry for over 10 years that has sold the policies or many different policies and they're still in existence today, please reach out. Uh, you know who you are. I've, I've had you guys reach out to me multiple times, uh, especially uh, back to your point about when the pandemic hit and there was that big dip and then the up. I might have had like three IUL people reach out to me because they're like, hey, Denzel, you know, dot, dot, dot. Look what's look what my IUL is doing in the recovery. They were saying how my thing is yeah. up 22 percent or 25 percent. And right. I'm over here with my whole life just getting my little three or my two mm -hmm. or my four, yep. you know, and uh, mm -hmm. it is tough. It's tough to have that, say, um, uh, that argument, like 22 is way higher than four. 22 is way yes. higher than three. Yeah. So it's tough to have that um, that dialogue. And so I just say, in, at the time, I was like, yeah, let's have a conversation. Show me what you got, you know? And I even, I even joined, you know, some of these companies to go through their process to see what they have. And oftentimes, like you say, it's a bunch of smoke and mirrors. There's no tangible data I can rely on as an agent to move nope. forward with. Uh, it's I'm relying on the excitement of making a ton of money as an insurance agent rather than how can I deliver a phenomenal product to yeah. a client and have them come back to me and send me their kids, send me their mom, dad, spouses. I mean, over and over again, you know, so that that's the, the difficulty that I've had. And that's why I've never actually fully went into the IUL space. I've been tempted many times with phenomenal mm -hmm. offers and phenomenal commission splits because of the, the volume that I can potentially do because of the, the YouTube channel and just the, the years of creating content. But I've kind of yeah. just stuck with whole life and I let my clients, yep, you know what? Can't can't offer you 20 well, plus percent, percent returns, but I can guarantee you this amount in this product and <laughs> guarantee you the money's gonna be there forever and you can use that money uh, and create arbitrage uh, through these strategies. And um, that's about it. You know, I don't make it no more sexy well, than that. <laughs> Well, here's the deal. Like, so with my with my background as director of business development for the for the IUL company I was with, I have relationships with BGAs out there that can I, I can sell anything to any. I mean, I can't, but my agency can because I'm not licensed. Just so everybody knows, I I want to put that out there fully. I have I'm a part owner of a company that has a bunch of licensed people, and we have a whole system and structure, um, you know, behind that. But my focus is on education, training, coaching, and and that is my role uh, to because I don't want the conflict of interest of me being licensed for all my team i want to be able to serve people and help the agents be able to do it without like saying hey i'm going to take a split on your deal based on doing that i'd rather be like participating in a overall company structure uh you know that that is set up to serve people and help agents grow and actually get product education and sales training and education versus like hype like you said and recruiting and all these different things that kind of go into it but but i have access to like with our company Every company that all these companies like uh, World Financial Group, PHP, PFA, I could get all the companies. I could make a lot more money with our agency selling those products. I won't do it because it's uh, it's just it's not right for the client, you know. And, and that's just what I believe. And so, um, you know, I think I think that 
means something. You know, the fact that like we could do that, we could make more money. Um, heck, man, if I changed my position right now and said, oh, I'm wrong, IUL, this, that, and I started pushing that and I, I found, you know, found the truth and I was wrong, I bet, you know how much money I could probably make just like pivoting and, and selling IUL right now? If I were to do that, it would be insane. But wow. like, it's not about the money. It's about where are we as a nation? Where are we as a world? Money is one of the greatest tools in your life. Your relationship with money, how you handle your money to help achieve the life that you want to create for yourself. Money is just a tool, you know? And and really, like, how are you showing up in your family life, in your spiritual life, in your faith, with your community and all these things? And how, how do you want money to, to kind of help be a tool to help you show up more powerfully in all those areas? That's really what this is about. And, and I encourage you to think about it from that angle, not just looking at a, an illustration that is virtually guaranteed to not come to life, right? Like, think about the components and the traits and the attributes that you want your money to fulfill for you in your life before making a decision. And I think when you do that, whole life becomes a no-brainer. Mm. And with that, as we come to a close here, I'd like for you to also share if uh, you have a website of some sort, and I'll be sure to put that yeah. in the comments section, just highlighting your, your service, your process for an insurance agent, an aspiring agent, somebody that wants to enter this industry, if they're looking totally. for some additional uh, training, like you just mentioned, you, you said you're not a licensed agent, you're part owner right. of an agency that provides right. training and marketing. I have a business partner of mine that I believe is going through your uh, services at the moment. And yep. based on what he's told me, he says he's getting a ton of value from it. So I always like to give awesome. my audience options uh, yeah. in terms of where they can go. And the reality is there really isn't a whole lot of options in terms of like the, the well-known, <sighs> I mean, the most two known services that I know of in this infinite banking space is the Nelson Nash Institute and right. then the um, Your Family Bank Company. Correct. Um, yep. They're relatively high ticket uh, services, um, but, yeah. you, but you have to, unfortunately, you've got to submit to their way. Uh, you have to do certain preliminary steps and actions and it kind of takes away from just looking at the industry as a whole how are policies yeah. designed what are my options how can i go about rather than you must do it this way you must do yeah. it this way and 100%. i think you can obviously agree with this there is no one way and you you also alluded to, to, to it earlier how you know personal finances is, is personal so there's no cookie cutter solution um, yeah. there's way more to that how very uniquely you can design a policy according to that individual situation it's just like rolling up to a car dealership and choosing your car with all the bells and whistles in it and now it's yours versus yep. a very standard SE yeah. model right um, totally with infinite banking you don't have to settle for the SE uh, you can get the totally. limited premium edition with that extra care and service from your agent, you know, who should be, who yeah. he or she should be with you for till death do you part, so to speak. Uh, totally. So please share yeah. how can an agent get with you, connect with you to go through that process. Totally. Thank you. Yeah, no, so it's um, life180.com. Okay. Uh, if you scroll down and go to life180.com and you scroll down to the bottom of the page, you can see there's a there's a client button and then there's a, a an agent button. So if you're interested in going through like an agent interview process, um, you know, we're growing. Uh, we're being very intentional about who we're growing with. Um, we're, we're working with inexperienced people uh, who are coming into the business, who are just getting newly licensed. We've worked with MDR team members who are coming and joining because they're like, hey, I love your systems. I love marketing. I love your training. And so, you know, we, we've, I mean, we got a top of the table MDRT producer that just joined us because because of that, which is pretty humbling in a way that, you know, that they're seeing what we're doing and they want to pivot, you know, because if you know anything about what it takes to be a top of the table MDRT member, it's it's not the easiest thing in the world to do. And so um, my, my focus and we're building an organization, you know, because I look at WFG, PHP, PFA, all these organizations and a lot of people think that I just don't like the network marketing component of it, but like I am a big proponent of network marketing. I just, I think that when it comes to doing it in the financial space, we got to take extra care to avoid the moral hazards that come along with certain ways that we compensate yeah. people and incentivize people to grow. And I, I think there's, you know, we're not selling hand cream here. We're not selling nutritional Correct. stuff. We're selling 
information and products that are either gonna make somebody's life better or completely derail their financial life that has generational effects and implications. You know, this is this is this is significant. It's a big deal. And so I'm a big believer that, you know, what we've done is we've allowed people to come in and kind of have an infrastructure where they could build their own team and do their thing the way that these other companies allow. But you don't have to to go out and make the same money and to be able to progress. It's more based on your growth, your education, your knowledge and, and your ability to go serve people before you focus on going out and recruiting people because you know the last thing this industry needs is more blind leading the blind you know like that's yeah. <laughs> like we need to we need to level up the 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 education and the knowledge uh, base for people to go out and do this business the right way so i would say whether you're new whether you've been in the business a while um, if you have a heart to really want to do this the right way, that's what we're all about. And to what Denzel said, you know, about these other organizations, there's a, there's places you can go get training and do all this stuff, but there, there's a price tag behind it. It's a pretty significant price tag in most cases. And what I saw when I got into this business, I mean, for me to go through, I had to spend over $40,000 for me to get the mentorship that I did when I went through it. Now, luckily national life paid for it a bunch, you know, so it was corporately paid for. So it was a blessing in a way, but. Uh, so I can't, you know, give them too much of a hard time. But the bottom line is like most people newer in this business don't have that kind of money or even 10 grand to go through like a circle or access master mentor program or access to it or anything of that nature. So I just like, hey, well, let's create a community where people can get plugged in, can learn. And, you know, like all I ask is like, hey, come in, be dedicated, learn and let us help you do it the right way and there's no stupid questions, I'd rather you ask questions that you're uncertain about and get the support that you need, uh, you know, before you before you go out and and you know hurt somebody that you love by giving them bad advice or something that you don't fully understand because i guess what and the reason i'm so powerful about that and so strong on that i made that mistake yeah you know and i had to have those conversations and i know how hard that was mm. and i know most people wouldn't be bold enough to go and have those hard conversations because i had some pretty broken relationships over and stuff that i had to work hard to recover from because it's you know when you when you make a mistake and tell somebody and then three years Years later got to go back to him and say hey by the way remember that twenty four thousand dollars a year you were putting into this yeah so you put seventy two thousand in over three years and i uh, gave you some bad advice and out of that seventy two thousand like you know you're you basically you're gonna lose 24 of it and we got to kind of move forward and make a pivot because i gave you bad advice like you know like that's that's a that's tough on a relationship no matter who you are and yes. so you know that's why i'm so powerful like so strong about why I'm passionate about why I do it this way, because I just, once again, and, and I think the, the economy where we're going right now as a world, um, I think our message of safety and preparedness uh, has never been more relevant than it is right now and never been more important than it is right now for people. So that's it. Thank you. Thank you, Chris. Appreciate your time. Hi, God bless you everyone. Too. Enjoy the rest of your day. We'll be talking soon. Uh, and stay tuned, we're gonna do another collaboration with Chris talking about just infinite banking rules and ethics, procedures in, in regards to as an agent um, and agent speaking to the client. And then as for you all who are looking to obtain this uh, cash value life insurance policy yourself, you're trying to decide between the two, um, these, these series that Chris and I are gonna be doing will really help you make that educated decision. At the end of the day, you get to choose who you want to work with, who you want to, you know, invest your time with. Remember, it is your money. It's your money. Mm -hmm. So make sure you fully comprehend these these products, you know, the, the strategy in and of itself. You know, let's run the numbers. You know how I am. We run the numbers. We run the numbers. Run them. It's so important. Just, just run them and, and see what totally. it says before what your emotion says. You know, um, and I'm putting myself on the spot here with my audience. I know a lot of you will will work with me simply due to the fact that I'm a man of faith. Right. And I and I put God first. And even if even then I say, please don't rely on that. That's that's my relationship with the father. Don't leverage my relationship with the father, with your relationship with the father. What if the father is telling you to go with someone else? And I'm maybe I'm just someone that's sowing a seed so that you can talk to this someone else that's maybe going to serve you better than I ever could because maybe I simply just don't have the knowledge yet to serve you maybe at that capacity that you're uh, looking for. So I like to be very open, honest and transparent to that point. 
Don't just rely on the looks and the and the lighting and the and the nice whiteboard. Like, run the numbers. What do the numbers say? Look at your financial numbers. Look at different YouTube channels. See who's providing.、Uh, really going into detail. That's what's really separating content creators today. You got people trying to catch you for the first thirty minute, thirty seconds to a minute, and then there's guys like Chris that are just like, like your videos just start off. Like it's like halfway into the video, and then it kind of rewinds. I kind of like how you do that. Yeah, it, yeah. It's like, what is he talking about? And now I have to stay <laughs> up to that point where,、yeah. oh, okay, that's where it is. Fifteen minutes into the video, and the, but he creates this whole timeline of just laying out all the facts, and I think that is what's separating content creators today versus chasing algorithms for views, likes, and subs.、Um, totally. You you have. I think you're almost at twenty thousand. Yeah, we're just over fifteen now. Okay,、Something、so、like、over fifteen,、yeah. but but it's cool. But the reality is, those people, I'm pretty sure, when you look at the analytics, you're averaging like eight, ten minute, you know, views. Eleven, eleven minute, eleven minute, twenty eight seconds is my average view duration. That's no joke. Like that, I'm, I'm like ten and a half. <laughs> so that's that's、yeah. serious stuff. People are listening and watching. And those are the people who、yeah. were after, right? Those are the people who stayed the whole hour in this video. Those are people、yep. that you know who you are, right? So don't、yep. lose that. Stay focused. Run the numbers and make that educated, informed decision on your finances. With that being said, God bless everyone. Talk to you soon.